sunlight without the word for sunlight. It's the way that you're supposed to feel without the definition of a word. I would rather, I would rather go blind, boy. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I actually had fun with that one. <laughs> okay, so I, I chose this song. I was in between At Last, which I feel like is the ultimate love song, really. Uh, and uh, I've always wanted to sing it, but I usually am on the other side of the spectrum. And uh, the reason I chose this song was actually because I fell onto the other side of the spectrum while it was time to choose. And that sucked. And the whole idea of actually like doing a love song during a breakup was like, well, just, you know, kick me in the dick, why don't you? But um, I also love this song because every time that I felt my guts spill out onto the floor, uh, this was the one. 
you know, the feeling that you would rather just, I remember being in my bed and wanting to literally take my eyes out so that I didn't have to think of his face because it was so painful. And I, I, I get it, you know, that rather wanting to be blind than watching somebody that you want to hold leave. I don't know if we do know how to write love songs. I think it's always about like getting into a trap with a narcissist or falling out of love or having this feeling or sex, you know, and those are all confusing things when you're in a relationship anyway. So like, of course, we're writing to those. Um, But there is one thing that I hate in a love song. And it's when someone says, will you marry me? Fuck off. I hate it. It's the worst. Stop talking about that marriage songs. Oh, they make me want to, f- I want to hang myself every time I listen to one. I'll never talk about marriage in a song. No, thank you. <laughs> That's a killer for me. Oh, God. Anything ding dong, wedding bells, fucking take me to my funeral, man. <laughs> no. And I think in songs, a lot of times when we're singing it to or for another person, it's the projection. So in a way, we are singing about what we love about someone else is how they light up in front of us or how we light up in front of them. And we forget that part, especially when someone leaves. And that's what what it feels like to pick up the pieces. But that's actually one of the most beautiful parts is that they were never pieces. They're just you. Like I said, I just went through a pretty gnarly breakup and I was like snot falling out of my face and crying and... I was like, what would 90-year-old me say to me? And it was like getting hit in the head with a frying pan. And it was like I could see my crumpled up self that was like, you'd be surprised what time will show you. People always stay beautiful. It's how you appreciate them is what changes. And I liked that because that applies to you too. You stay beautiful, how you appreciate yourself changes. Especially the people around us. It's why our relationships change as they deepen, as they grow. It's why it, what happens when we grow apart. <sighs> I'm always really cautious of anyone that preaches, of, of anything too preachy, you know? I think that probably comes from a heavy religious background where a lot of things came as acceptance where there should be doubt. Um, And I think that's the thing with love, too. If we force this idea of love, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Mm. I think that's actually how people end up hating themselves is because they can't figure out how. And the best thing to do is just be supportive. I mean, support. When someone can sit with you in your fucking stink is probably the biggest way. It's not about preaching it. It's about showing it. So however we find the ways to do that, that list is not short, you know. Pick one, then pick another, then pick another, then pick another.